AP Physics C, Momentum and Impulse, and today we're going to be talking about explosion. I know it may not seem like a collision, but we're going to be treating a lot like the collision problems. Alright, so let's look at this. Two ice skaters push off against one another, starting from a stationary position. The 45 kilogram skater acquires a speed of 0.375 meters per second. What speed does the 60 kilogram uh, skater acquire? Assume that uh, any other unbalanced forces during the collision are negligible. Okay, so I know this doesn't seem like an explosion, but what we have with an explosion is we have a pieces or something that is together, and then they break apart. And that's what's happening here. We have these two people at, together at the very beginning, but then they push off each other and they explode and go into their different directions. So remember, for these explosion problems, we're going to be treating the same way. Momentum initial is equal to momentum af, uh, final. So this is things before the explosion, explosion and after. So we know for both the 45 kilogram skater and the 60 kilogram skater, at the very beginning, they're stationary, meaning they're not moving. And then afterwards, the 45 kilogram skater goes 0.375 meters per second to the right, and the 60 kilogram skater, we don't know what his velocity is. We should know since he is heavier, he won't have as much velocity. But let's figure out what this velocity is. Okay. Uh, 45 times 0.375 divided by 60. And we get 0.28 meters per second or negative 0.28 meters per second. Another thing that I want to show here is that kinetic energy actually increases after the explosion. Before the explosion, or what happened, the push off, there's zero kinetic energy. But then afterwards, there was an increase of kinetic energy, okay? They both started moving afterwards. Many times, this is uh, given by a chemical reaction. But in this situation, it's just given by from the muscles. They provided this. But we'll see other examples. All right, let's look at this. A 1 kilogram block and a 2 kilogram block are pressed together on a horizontal friction of the surface, with, uh, which are compressed very, with, that are compressed very light spring between them. <laughs> they are now attached to the spring. After they are released, they both move uh, free from the swing. So we want to know what's true. Okay, so this is the smaller mass, and then this is the bigger mass. And we want to know what happens to a velocity. The lighter block will have more kinetic energy than the heavier block, A. B, the heavier block will have more kinetic energy than the lighter block. C, both objects, both blocks will have the same amount of kinetic energy. D, both blocks will have equal speed. E, the magnitude of the momentum of the heavy block will be greater than the magnitude of the momentum of the lighter block. So let's look at this problem. Well, we're gonna, how we're going to decipher this is momentum initial equals momentum final. We should know at the very beginning, before this explodes or springs off of each other, they have an initial momentum of zero. And we should know after the explosion, the momentum should still be zero. So even though they're moving, they should cancel out with each other. So if this has a bigger mass, and it's moving with a certain velocity, and this one has a certain mass, it has to have a bigger velocity in order for these momentums to cancel out with each other. Okay, so this has smaller mass but bigger velocity. This one has bigger mass but smaller velocity. That being the case, we know kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. We know that the more velocity something has, the more kinetic energy it has. So even though this has more mass, it's... Uh, Velocity is more important or more significant in this case with kinetic energy. So since this lighter one has more velocity, the lighter block will have more kinetic energy than the heavier block, A. Okay? Okay, moving on. A spring-loaded toy sits at rest on a horizontal friction of the surface. When the spring releases, the toy breaks into equal pieces A, B, and C, which slide along the surface. Piece A moves off in the negative x direction, while piece B moves off in the negative y direction. What are the signs of the velocity component of C? So we should know, again, uh, toy sits on, at rest. So at the very beginning, the momentum is initial is going to be equal to zero. What we should know is after they spring apart, uh, one's going to the left, one is going down. Is that what it is? Uh, negative x and the other one is going negative y. Yeah, down. So then this one, if the momentum is going to be momentum final is going to also equal zero because momentum initial is zero, that means it needs to cancel out with the things that are going to the left and things that are going to the uh, to down. So things have to go be going north 
uh, north, right, <laughs> northeast, in order for it to cancel out. Okay, so for this one, what we should know is that this PC is going both in the X and Y direction in order to cancel out with the momentum in the A for part A and part B. It says which of the three pieces is moving the fastest? Okay, uh, so they're all equal masses. So they're all equal masses here. But what we should know is for this PC, as it's moving like this, since they all have the same amount of mass, that means that in order for this to cancel out with the bottom velocity, this has to be going with the same velocity that B is going in, in the, in the Y direction. And the X direction, in order for this to cancel out, A has to be going in the same direct, uh, with the same amount of velocity in order for it to cancel out. So that means that C is going to be going the fastest because the hypotenuse is going to be the biggest uh, object. So C is going to be going the fastest. Okay? All right, moving on. Uh, that's a little video. All right, let's look at, look at example number 23. A plate falls vertically to the floor and breaks up into three pieces, which slide along the floor. Immediately after the impact, a 320-gram piece moves along the x-axis with a speed of 2 meters per second, and a 355-gram piece moves along the y-axis with a speed of 1.5 meters per second. The third piece has a mass of 100 grams. In what direction does the third piece move? You can neglect any horizontal forces during the crash. Okay, so what we should know is we should be looking at everything in the x direction and everything in the y direction. Okay? So at the very beginning, this plate is going down, crashing down. So it's not moving in the x direction. But we have, it's all intact. So 300, uh, 0.355 plus 0.32 plus 0.1 kilograms. And at the very beginning, they're not moved, before the crash, they're not moving in the x direction at all. So this is all equal to zero. And then the 0.355 kilogram object is moving 1.5 meters per second in the y direction. So in the x, it's just zero. The 0.32 kilogram object is going to the right 2 meters per second. So that's 2. And the 100, kilog 100 gram object or 0.1 kilogram object, we don't know what the velocity is for this one. So let's figure out what the velocity is for the, in the x direction for this 100 gram one. Okay. So let's see. 0.32 times 2. Uh, divided by 1, and we get negative 6.4 meters per second. So we should know that when this hits, this piece is going to be going 6.4 meters per second in the left direction. Now let's look at everything in the y. Momentum initial in the y equals momentum to find the y. Again, what we should know is this piece, I know it looks like it might be in the y direction, but we're calling this the z direction for this problem. So when it collides, it's not the in the y direction, it's not moving at all. So we have 0.355 plus 0.32 plus 0.1, and it's not moving at all in the y direction. After, though, it breaks apart, the 0.355 kilogram object is moving in the y direction, 1.5 meters per second. The 0.32 kilogram object is moving zero in the y direction, so this is zero. And then we have the 100 gram object, or 0.1 kilogram object, moving with a certain velocity in the y direction. So let's try to see if we can figure that out. So 0.355 times 1.5, and then bring that to the side, divide by 0.1, and we get negative 5.3 meters per second. So then we see that this is going to be 5.3 meters per second. So it's asking for what direction does the third piece move. So let's find what this angle is. I'm going to do tan inverse opposite 5.3 divided by 6.4. We should get a certain angle. Tan inverse 5.3 divided by 6.4. And we get 39.6 degrees. And we call that south of or 219 degrees. <laughs> All right, uh, let's look at the next one. All right, a 1.2 kilogram spring activated toy bomb slides on a smooth surface along the x-axis with a speed of 0 0.5 meters per second. At the origin, zero, the bomb explodes into two fragments. Fragment one has a mass of 0 0.4 kilograms and a speed of 0.9 meters per second along the negative x-axis in the figure. 
the angle theta uh, made by the velocity vector of the fragment 2 and the x-axis is closest to blank. So we want to find what this theta is right there. So again, let's look at the x and the y because things are happening in both directions. So we have at the very beginning, we have this 1.2 kilogram uh, toy going 0.5 meters per second to the right. Afterwards, it explodes into two pieces. We have the 0.8 kilogram piece. We don't know what the velocity is in the x direction after it goes. So we're, we're trying to find that. Uh, but we know that the 0.4 kilogram object is actually just going down, so it has zero velocity in the x direction. So let's find the velocity in the x direction for the other piece. 0.2 times 0.5 divided by 0.8. And we get, it should be going 0 0.75 meters per second in the x direction. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.75. Now let's look at everything in the y direction. Momentum initial in the y equals momentum final in the y. So we have this 1.2 kilogram object. And actually, it's not moving at all in the y direction. So that's going to be 0 before the explosion. And then we have the 0.8 kilogram object. We don't know how fast it's moving in the y direction. Uh, that's what we're looking for. And then we have the 0.4 kilogram object. And that's going down 0.9 meters per second, so negative 0.9. So then we have the velocity in the y, so 0.4 times 0.9 uh, divided by 0.8, and we get 0.45 meters per second. Yeah, so this is 0.45. Uh, so now what's it? In the figure, the angle theta made by the velocity vector of the fragment 2 and the x-axis is closest to. So we're looking for this theta, so tan inverse opposite 0.45 divided by 0.75 is going to give us theta. So let's find theta. Uh, tan inverse, 0.45, divided by 0.75, and we get 30.96 degrees. Okay? Hope that made sense. All right, I think this is the last problem we're going to do. Uh, Jacquez and George meet in the middle of a lake while paddling their canoes. They come to a complete stop and talk for a while. When they're ready to leave, Jacquez pushes George's canoe with the force F to separate the two canoes. What is correct to say about the final momentum and kinetic energy of the system if we can neglect any resistance due to the water? So we should know before they push off each other, they have a momentum of zero. And after they push off each other, they're going to have a momentum of zero. That's because even though they're both moving, they're going opposite directions and they have the same momentum but moving opposite directions. So the final momentum is zero. It's either going to be D or E. And it so D is, and the final kinetic energy is zero. Uh, and part B is, but the final kinetic energy is positive. So we should know kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. And with energy, there's no direction. So we don't care if things are moving in opposite direction. They're still going to have kinetic energy. So we're going to see that there's going to be a lot of kinetic energy actually after this push. So it's, this, it's the final moment is zero, but the final kinetic energy is positive. That's the correct answer. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, next time, we're going to talk about elastic collision.